Hey, this is Joe from Persona's. Got a fun one for you today. So you, as you can see behind me, I've got drums and other things. Uh, recorded some songs with my band. In a recent video, I talked about how we did pre-production, but we did the actual tracking session over the weekend. And I wanted to show you a cool trick that's super simple, and you may already know about it, but if you're new to recording and production or Studio One, this might be a new one for you. So I want to show it to you real quickly. So the song begins with this drum loop we recorded and bass. Um, and my buddy Tim brought over this modular synth that he has, and he had created this cool arpeggiated part, so we plugged it in and recorded it, and what we wanted to do was to have the synth loop go first, it's an eight bar chord progression, then have the drum loop come in. But having it all just kind of start from the downbeat, it, it always was a little funky in the very starting of notes. Um, it just, we were trying to think of a way to fade that in rather than just have it start. So here's what that part sounds like. And then the drum loop kicks in. So one option for fading things in, if you don't know this one, it's super easy. You just select the event that you want to fade, and you'll notice these little triangles in the top left and right corners. These let you literally fade things in. So if we wanted to fade this in slowly over the course of eight bars, we could do something like that. And you can see the, the waveform moves to kind of show you what's happening. And then you can adjust the curve to maybe fade in quicker and then slowly fade in the rest, or maybe it fades in super slowly and finally kind of ramps up quickly towards the end, or you go straight, it's fairly linear. So here's what that sounds like. So eight bars is a long time to just fade something in like that. And I thought maybe I can make it a little more interesting. So rather than a normal just volume fade in, I want to actually fade in uh, using a filter and let in more frequencies over the course of the fade. Now, electro the electronic musicians among us know this really well. The cutoff filter on different synths, that's, you know, one of the core elements to doing electronic type music. Well, for guitar players like me, we don't get a chance to use that very often. So there's lots of ways you can do this. Here's how I did it, uh, and it worked out well. So first thing I did was put Pro EQ on the synth track, rolled off some low end because it was a little rumbly. Um, the next thing I did was I turned on the HC, also known as high cut, also known as a low pass filter. High cut cuts the highs, low pass lets the lows pass through. Um, we need to click that to turn it on, and we can turn it all the way up to the very top like this. So right now it's technically doing a little bit, but it's not really affecting the sound. I just need it to wait for me to like give it my commands. Next thing we do is right click on this, the frequency knob here, okay? Right click and choose edit automation. And what this does, it creates uh, an automation lane. You'll notice this view changed. So now we can't click and move the audio. We're now looking at the automation lane and this horizontal yellow line is the automation lane for this specific um, parameter, which is the high cut frequency setting. So if we take and move this, we are changing that frequency. You can see it moving on the EQ here. As we move this thing around, we're actually moving the frequency. So what does that mean? That means we can automate this to turn that frequency up and down based on what we want to do. So what I did is I brought it all the way down and I had a start point here at the beginning of the song, maybe just a little before. And then, uh, by the way, these little points, if you have too many and you need to get rid of them, just double click on them. They will go away. So I took the second point and I basically said, I want this thing to fade all the way in by the time the loop starts. So it's going to start off real dark with almost no sound, and then it's going to slowly fade in over time. And here's what that sounds like. But there's a problem. You see it gets to here and then it drops all the way off again. I don't want that. So I'm going to double click this to remove it. So now the rest of the song that filter's not doing anything, but it's gonna fade in at the beginning. And let's move it back a little bit so it comes to full frequency for maybe the last half of that last bar. And here's what that sounds like.
so from there you can hear like maybe that's too long of an intro still but still if you want to bring things in and fade them in sometimes just a regular volume fade is absolutely the right choice but sometimes you want to just fade it in certain groups of frequencies at a time and that's how you do it also works for fade outs as well at the very end of the song we've got it doing a different kind of a riff so you can hear how it fades out there. That's actually done on the synth in itself. He faded out the um, the filter. Uh, but if that had been just the same without that filter there, we could have added one in like this, and it would have sounded like this. It's a cool way to fade out things that maybe have a lot of noise in the high frequencies, like a guitar that has a big whoosh sound. You could fade it out gently by just rolling off the high frequencies using this. It's like rolling the tone knob on your guitar, um, but you can do it in a very controlled way that you can absolutely control exactly when it happens, how quickly it fades it, and how far it goes. Maybe you don't go all the way down to zero. Maybe you just bring it down to 1K or something, so it just makes it less bright. Those are all options we have available to us as well. As you can see, every parameter in Studio One can be automated and it opens you up to a lot of possibilities, but hopefully this is a fun new trick you can try on one of your songs in the future. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.